All right, so I'm going to provide a quick um, intro and overview of the Adventures in Sierra RV Park acquisition model. Uh, this model uh, contains four tabs outside of the version tab. It has a summary, the annual cash flow tab, the monthly cash flow tab, and the waterfall tab. Uh, so in the summary, you're going to put all of your project level assumptions in here. Um, you'll put in your general info, purchase info, uh, timing info, when you, when you, the date you decide to purchase, the hold period. Uh, this hold period goes up to 10 years, I believe. Um, then you have your exit assumptions. So exit cap rate you'll put in and then sale expenses. Uh, below that, you have your debt assumptions, uh, your loan to value, interest rate, points on the loan. Uh, you have the ability to have interest only for a certain amount of time. Um, and then your loan amortization uh, thereafter. And then below here, you'll get a summary of, of um, what happens uh, based on the assumptions you put in for your debt. Up top here, you'll see all your returns. You have your unlevered and levered at the project level. Then you have your limited partner and your general partner returns uh, that flow through from the waterfall tab. And then below that, we have our operating assumptions. Um, so up top here is revenue. So we have gross potential rent, um, projected vacancy over the year, and then other income. And we currently have store and laundry, and they're based on um, the store is based on an aggregate dollar per day, and then the laundry is um, dollar per day per site. Um, and then below that, we have a percent increase per year for the, all of the revenue line items, and we currently have it at 3%. And so below that, we have expenses, and here you can put in your expense line items, and I put in generic ones, and you could update this to your specific property that you're looking at. And then the way I'm doing it in this model is I'm just pegging it as a percent of effective gross revenue. Um, and so this will flow out every year. So it says effect, percent of effective gross revenue um, year one. I could potentially erase that year one because really it's effective gross revenue every year. So in this line item, uh, cost of goods sold will be 8% um, for year one, two, three, uh, so on and so forth. I right, so actually am going to erase that. Um, and so, yeah, so these are the expenses. And down below, we have CapEx, which is actually um, a percent of NOI. And then to the right here, um, so this is actually a holdover from uh, an internal development model that I have. So we actually don't need Proforma Year 2 stabilized. This is already a stabilized asset. So why don't we just update this to Proforma Year 1? And so we're going to have to update this. I'll just do this real quick. And there we go. Okay. All right. So now to the far right here, we have uh, the year one annual assumptions uh, or annual um, expense line item numbers based on our percent of EGR. All right, so let's move on to the annual tab. Here you'll see it's just really our annual cash flow projections, nothing um, unique here. One thing I'll just show you is that as you update the hold period, uh, you'll see that this updates. And you'll note we have this extra, so it's a 10-year hold, but year 11 is not being factored out in the cash flow below. We just use that to get to our NOI so that we can um, put a cap rate on that and get our sell price. All right, so um, again, we have our, our operating cash flows. We have debt here, we have our disposition, then unlevered and levered cash flows below. And then our next tab is our monthly, and it's all the same line items, um, except they're just in monthly periods. And then finally, we have our waterfall model. Now, our waterfall model um, provides three tiers. You have uh, uh, tier one, and you can do either IRR or an equity multiple hurdle. Um, 
And here's where you're, you'll put in your limited partner contributions. You can put in your return hurdle here. Let's say we have a, a 10% for hurdle one, no preferred return. You could put yes, and then your LP gets a preferred return. And then um, there's a question here that says, does the GP get an equal return on cash before moving into the next tier? Meaning that after the LP gets their money, then if there's money left over, GP gets to catch up and get all its money so that it will equal a 10% IR before they move down to the next tier here. Um, uh, so there's return of capital only, which is an option, or they can get an equal return. Uh, for now, we'll just put the preferred return as no. Um, and then here's the return split in year one. I, typically, it's... Um, contributions is what the return is in tier one. Then we have our promote for our GP. You can put in your promote number here. And then we can have a tier two hurdle. Let's say this one's 12% or, or 13%. And then the returns will be split um, accordingly up until you hit that 13%. And then thereafter, the remaining cash flow, uh, you can put a split uh, for, for how that should pan out. And that all flows through. Um, and then you have this check at the bottom here. Just make sure that the cash flow is flowing through properly. So that's the IRR hurdle. And you can do the same um, with an equity multiple. So here you'll put in your equity multiple. It's still a preferred return. The split, um, the promote, and then your second hurdle here for equity multiple, for the equity multiple. And that is everything. Um, so I hope this model is helpful for you. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.